Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about barrier aggression and to help me out is my little buddy Waylon over here who as you can see from the opening clip actually suffers from barrier aggression and he does so in the confinement of a crate. So first up, we're gonna talk about what barrier aggression is. Well, it's any sort of aggressive behavior. So intentive behavior in barking, biting, lunging, or snapping in the presence of other people on the side of something that creates a barrier. So in Waylon's case, the barrier is the crate, but it also can be behind a door, a baby gate, or even the fence in your backyard. Now dogs that have barrier aggression can have it against humans, other animals, or even both. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why, but before I do, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. It helps YouTube share it with other pet parents that need this valuable information as well. So on to why, why does barrier aggression occur? Well, one of the reasons is frustration. Perhaps your dog wants to get to another dog on the other side of a fence or another structure to play with them. That can actually cause some aggressive type tendencies. So if you've ever seen any of those videos out there where you've got all these dogs on one side barking at all the other dogs on the other side and you remove the gate and all of a sudden everybody's kind of cool or walks away or plays, that's one of the reasons because they're frustrated and that's one of the ways to communicate that frustration. Territorialism can play a part in that as well. And then the third thing that really contributes to some barrier aggression type issues is also resource guarding. What's in the crate? Is it a blanket, a bed, food, bowl? Are they confined to a specific area with some of their things only and they're very used to that? Those are some reasons that you can see barrier aggression begin to arise. If you've never seen this type of behavior in your dog before, but now all of a sudden they're getting barky, lungy, and snippy and bitey at other animals or people in the confinement of a crate or behind a baby gate or a door or a fence, there could be some contributing factors. Stressors are a big indicator, so moving, new changes, new baby in the house, perhaps you brought a new dog home, perhaps you've changed something up in your normal routine. Pain is also an underlying indication. Dogs are very stoic and don't always outwardly show how much pain they're in. So if they're in a confined area or a closed off area, they're gonna be more protective of areas that hurt. So if this is something that just came on as of recent, it's a good idea to schedule an appointment with your veterinarian to make sure that your dog isn't having any sort of underlying pain that could be contributing to this type of issue. Now let's talk about how to help your dog if they have barrier aggressive issues. <laughs> first things first, we're gonna remove items out of the area of confinement. So whether it's behind a baby gate, in a closet, in a small space, or even a crate that can increase the likelihood that they're gonna feel the need to guard in that space. We're gonna start with nothing in the crate to begin with, and then as the dog gets more comfortable, we might add different things back. So as much as Waylon loves his toy and his bowl here, we're gonna go ahead and remove those items. Hang on, buddy. Good. Now Waylon here is not, barrier aggressive or food aggressive or toy aggressive when it comes to people. So as you can see, I'm perfectly fine and comfortable going into his crate and removing those items. If there were a dog next to me or near me, I would not attempt that because I could get hurt in the process of him going after the other dog because of these items. Hang tight, buddy. Now that I've removed all of the reasons that Waylon might have an increased issue with other animals or people around the crate, I'm gonna start off with the next step, which is super, super simple. And that's just a positive association with people approaching the crate. Now his issues with dogs, but I'm starting a step back. I'm starting with people. He already likes me, so I wanna make this a routine practice that's absolutely normal. And when he sees me coming, it's nothing but good things. This is low value item. It's just really his kibble. He'll work for his kibble, but it's nothing super high value. So I'm just using his regular regular chicken and rice dog food. And all I'm doing is approaching the crate and dropping in a treat. Now for dogs that have human related barrier aggression, um, you're not gonna give this treat directly to them. You're just gonna drop it in. Whaling can take it either way, but all I'm doing is letting him know that when I walk up to that crate, yummy things come. And the reason I'm doing this is because eventually I'm gonna walk up to the crate or past the crate at least with a dog, which he doesn't like. So I want him to know that when I'm coming, it means good things are happening, even if I'm coming with something else that he might be concerned about. Boy, this is an exercise that I will do with every single family member in the house so that the same idea and expectation and positive association is across the board with all members of the household. Same with all dogs in the household. We start with one dog at a time, which I'll show you here shortly. And then we'll do this rotation with all dogs in the household as well. Good boy. Now that I've given Waylon some practice with a simple approach, we bring in another dog and the real work begins. 
I'm starting at a distance that Whalen is non-reactive. This is actually best done with two people, where one person interacts with a new dog and the other rewards the confined dog simultaneously. Since I'm working alone here, I'm just offering Whalen some verbal reassurance. Now for this exercise, I break out the high value treats. I'm using Stuart's freeze-dried liver, which Whalen goes completely gaga for. I begin with simple drive-bys with my body in between the two dogs, and as I walk by, I drop a piece of liver to Whalen. During this step, don't stop moving. Your time with the two dogs close by should be very brief. You want to keep that pressure that the other animal creates to a minimum. This is a step that I will practice over and over and over again until I see some signs from Whalen that he's becoming much more comfortable with the situation. Barrier aggressive behavior can seem pretty explosive when it happens, but there are some precursors to look for. So some of the things that I look for that a dog is about to display some aggressive tendencies behind a barrier is a tense, stiff body, a stiffened tail, being able to see the whites around the eyes of the dog and it's much more visible than it normally is. And even just a slight hold of the breath. These are all indicators of stress. Now, as I work through these exercises, the goal is to reduce these signs by helping the dog behind the barrier become much more comfortable. Once I see more of a loose body, more of a loose tail, and less of that white eye, that whale eye, even an inquisitive posture and an offered sit instead of a defensive posture, that's when I'll move to step two, where now the two dogs are right next to each other and I'm on the opposite side. I'll repeat this step over and over again, looking for those same signs of the dog starting to relax, that's confined, and then I'll start the approach with a pause with the other dog. I walk the other dog up to the crate, stop and pause for a moment, offer that food reward, and then offer that pressure relief once again. Okay, so here you can see that I have Whalen behind a baby gate, also serving as a barrier. A lot of dogs have issues with even just this much between them and whatever else that they want to get to or whatever else is behind the gate that they're protecting. So I'm doing the exact same thing that I did with the crate, where I'm just offering some positive reinforcement every time that I approach the gate. So I walk away, I come back, approach and drop a little treat on the floor. Again, starting off with just me, this is just low value. If he were afraid of other people or reactive to other people on the other side of the barrier, I would start with a high value, but again, with me, he's not. So we're gonna use the high value for what sets him off the most, which is other dogs. Good boy, buddy. That's a good boy. All right. Good boy, come, sit, good, stay, good girl. Now, as you can see, that last approach that we did, Waylon's ta tail was wagging and his body was much more loose. He might not be 100% comfortable with this process because again, it takes quite a while. Give yourself at least a couple of weeks, but you'll notice his body language is so much different than what you saw in that original clip. And that's just with straight practice and positive reinforcement when something is around that might otherwise set him off. Letting him know there's nothing to guard, there's nothing to be concerned about because you're confined and in a separate space from everyone else. Good boy, buddy. There's one more piece I wanna show you, which is how to do this behind a door where you can't easily deliver treats just like I showed you behind the gate and with the crate. But before I do that, I wanna mention how important impulse control exercises are outside of these very specific barrier aggressive exercises as well. When dogs are reactive to other animals and people, they're typically in a very impulsive state of mind. It's just straight action. So by working on impulse control outside of these activities, it helps them be in more of a thinking state of mind more frequently and can kind of throw that reactivity process into a bit more of a halt by throwing them into a thinking state rather than just an action pattern. So check out my video on impulse control exercises to see some of the different ways that you can work with your dog outside of these activities to help create more impulse control, more deferred gratification in a sense, to help as a catalyst in activities like this to decrease stress and decrease reactivity and therefore barrier aggression. 
So you might be thinking, what do I do when I have a barrier that I can't easily deliver treats behind? Well, here's a great example. So Waylon is actually barrier aggressive behind these French doors as well when it comes to the other dogs in the household. So again, I'm gonna start off the same way that I had before, where I've got my low value treats, and all I'm gonna do is just open the door for a split second, pop a treat, close the door, leave, reapproach, open the door, deliver a treat. The reason that I'm doing this repetitively, again, is so that he knows that every time I approach the door, something yummy happens. <laughs> That way when I approach with the dog, he's less likely to be concerned and he's gonna know that I have something good coming. Okay, so the next step is incorporating the dog and bringing the dog in small short spurts. Now, when you're behind a door barrier, it's much more helpful if you have a second person working with you as well so that they can reward the dog on the same side of the door while you're simultaneously walking around with the other dog in very short, brief, sporadic moments. But right now I'm working by myself aside from my cameraman, so it's just gonna be me. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. But the first couple times that you do this, have some help. Have someone else on the other side of the door that can deliver reward systems, positive reinforcement with food or even squeaky toys or whatever they like, while the other person on the outside is completely separate from them, just occupying that space. So good things are happening while they're outside occupying that space. Ivy, come. Good girl. Heel. Good, right here, sit, stay. The other thing that I'm gonna do is when I bring the reward to Waylon, sit, good, stay, is I'm gonna toss it away from the door a little bit, <laughs> even though that one was close, just to also give him some pressure relief. Ivy here. Since the pressure of the dog being present causes him stress, so I also give him a little bit of relief at the same time. Sit, good, right there, stay. Boy. Leave it. Good. Ready, Ivy? Ivy? Good. Side. 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 Good. Sit. Good. Right here. Good. Stay. Side. Sit. Stay. Now you'll notice I'm putting the barrier right back in place very quickly because it is the barrier that's the issue and that he needs practice with. When I remove the barrier and open the door, Waylon no longer has a problem with other dogs. Good boy, buddy. Good, good job, mama. Right. Barrier aggression is something that owners can find very frustrating and confusing because while the dogs might be perfectly fine without having a fence or a crate or behind another barrier, it can be a completely different and scary and unsafe story with that barrier in place or confinement in place. But with lots of persistence and with work over a couple of weeks with positive reinforcement every time what causes them concern is around, you can really start to reduce these issues and safely have dogs interacting in the same room even with a barrier in place. So persistence is key in going slow and steady and moving at their pace and making sure that only positive and good things happen when other people or other animals are near the barrier that's causing that concern. Now, before I let you go, I wanna talk about what not to do, and this is just as important as what to do. Don't yell, punish, or hit your dog in any type of way because that's gonna make the situation much, much worse. Think about it, when you're yelling and someone else yells, now you're both yelling and the energy is just through the roof. And in dogs, arousal and high energy, which are pretty much the same thing, leads to those accidents, those unsafe situations. So be sure not to yell at your dog and cause further stress and further frustration. Same with hitting. Make sure you're not hitting the top of the crate. All you're doing is adding fuel to that fire and causing more reason for them to be concerned and exhibit some of those aggressive behaviors that you've seen prior. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you really liked it, stick around and subscribe so you can get more content just like this delivered right to you to help you build a better relationship and bond with your dog. Thanks so much for watching.